Software Engineering Radio Episode 111, About Us 2008 Edition. This is Software Engineering Radio, the podcast for professional developers on the web at se-radio.net. SC Radio brings you relevant and detailed discussions and interviews on software engineering topics every 10 days. Thanks to our audience and the partners listed on our website for support. Hello everybody, welcome to Software Engineering Radio. This is a special episode, it does not feature any regular content. So if you are expecting a typical SE Radio interview or discussion, maybe you should turn the podcast off. But of course we'd be happy if you stayed listening. This is an episode about SE Radio. I want to talk a little bit about history, about the current status, about some of our, well, supporters slash sponsors. And also, I want to talk about the statistics we've done for a while. You know, you remember the survey. And finally, I want to introduce all the team members a little bit more extensively, also the people who work in the background. So, uh, well, yeah, I hope it's interesting for you. Uh, if so, please continue listening. And don't complain that this is not on a regular episode. I mean, we, we, we even injected it between the regular 10-day cycle. So you can still uh, expect a good, solid SE Radio episode every 10 days. So let's first talk a little bit about you guys, our audience. I just checked. We have, on average, more than 15,000 downloads per episode. That's really cool. Um, within the first month after publication, an episode typically gets to about 9,000 downloads. And uh, the maximum number we have, it's one of the early earlier episodes on patterns, uh, it's about 24,000. That's a significant number. And I know that other websites and multimedia outlets on software are in the same ballpark. And also some print media, well-known print media are, are in the same ballpark. So 15,000 is a really good number. So first of all, thanks to all of you guys for downloading, for listening, and so on. It's really great. Uh, I think... Um, SE Radio is really one of the well-known outlets on uh, information and tutorials and news. Oh, well, not news, but, but up-to-date information on software engineering. So thanks for that. Let's look a little bit about the audience structure. First of all, the age distribution. We have about uh, 39% of you guys are between 20 and 30. Another 40% are between 30 and 40 and uh, 15% are between 40 and 50. And then there are 1% uh, below 20. The professional experience numbers, 30% um, have between 5 and 10 years of experience, another roughly 30% uh, between, between 10 and 20. Um, and then uh, there is also 10% above 20 years of experience. And of course, there are a couple of people below. The good thing about that is that our audience is relatively experienced. We do address uh, experienced people. And that's, of course, uh, a good sign because it means the information is relevant. Um, about 70%, 75% of the audience are developers. About 30% call themselves architects. And of course, you could select several things here, right? You also we have also 25% team leads, 10% researchers, and 10% uh, students. Um, the people work mostly in enterprise. We have 55 in enterprise, another f roughly 55% in web applications, 30% uh, in client apps. We have about 20% embedded. I think that might have grown in the meantime. But, uh, well, anyway, most of the people work in software consulting or development, 70%. We have about 20% telecom and communication, about uh, 8% healthcare, 7% uh, defense, 6% automotive, 5% uh, aerospace. And um, if you look at uh, their um, education, then about 80% are computer scientists, 5% um, roughly are electrical engineering and or physicists each. The organizational size where people work, um, more than 1,000 people is uh, 30%. 100 to 1,000 people is about 20%. 50 to 100 people is about 10%. And 10 to 50 people is 18%. 
And finally, the geographical location. Um, Western Europe is, uh, what is it, 34%. North America, 30%. Northern Europe, 10%. Eastern Europe, 8%. And then, of course, there is people all over the world, South America, Southeast Asia, Central America, uh, Australia and New Zealand, East Asia, and so on, Southern Asia. Uh, worldwide reach, so um, that's quite good. So that's, um, that's a summary of the audience details that are based on our survey. Thanks again, by the way, for filling this in. It really helped us to understand our audience. And um, it would help us find sponsors, but I guess we, we don't need that really. I mean, uh, I'll talk about that later. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is sound quality. You might uh, remember the dreaded discussions we had back then where people complained about our sound quality. And sometimes it really wasn't that good. Uh, typically, if you record things through Skype or something, um, you do have quality losses. And then, you know, sometimes the recording really just, you know, we, we, we messed it up, not making, you know, not not getting the levels right and stuff. But we really improved sound quality. I guess this one is probably the best sounding episode ever. Uh, one reason is that the donations we received from you, we, inv we invested most of that into uh, recording gear, actually. So initially, I recorded most of the interviews with one mic, you know, uh, talking to people and handing the mic around. And of course, this got all those rumbling noises when the microphone was handed around. So at some point, I got uh, a second microphone and an external recording device, an M-Audio 2496. It's a dual two-channel stereo mp3 recorder and i had still two microphones for uh, you know for people to actually take into their hands and that was well it was much better but it wasn't perfect but the problem was um problem was that of course people you know always talked uh, you know I'm, I'm simulating this i talked uh, next to the microphone and stuff because they didn't move the microphone right and so at some point i got uh, relatively expensive uh, neck mounted microphones uh, this is really getting into the professional gear. They had XLR connectors for people, you know, for those who know what this means. And uh, since then, we I think we really have good uh, quality on the interviews because now the microphone is always in front of people's mouth and uh, it's, yeah, it's just much better. Um, and then, of course, uh, more recently, we got actually, we got a mixer, a Mackie mixer, and I also got uh, broadcast microphones. So this one is actually recorded uh, through a Heil microphone. PR40, if you know what this is. Uh, this is really good stuff. And I also re uh, bought uh, recently a Telos One. That's a so-called telephone hybrid, which is basically a way to record telephone calls. And uh, you will hear subsequently a bunch of uh, interviews um, coming up um, where I use this device. And uh, yeah, well, you know, if you're lucky and you use Skype uh, and Skype has a really good day, then the quality is really good, but it can also really suck. So um, using a regular landline telephone with a telephone hybrid is actually a good, a good bet. It's, it's always the same medium quality, but I guess we all know uh, telephone recordings from, um, you know, from the radio and it's, it's accepted quality and it's easy to listen to. So, um, so that's where most of your donations went. Uh, of course, uh, we also bought a bunch of other things. You know, we experimented with press releases and we, we had to spend some money for our new website. But most of the money actually went into uh, audio gear and uh, that uh, really got us to a professional recording level uh, and then it sounds really good, I think, today. Um, and, and also another thing that we learned over time is, uh, you know, how to use the tools, for example, how to normalize, how to compress, you know, which denoiser to use. For example, the one in Audacity really isn't that great. The one in Audition, which we also bought, uh, is much better. So, so that's the stuff you learn over time. And I think we are now at a stage where the sound is really, I mean, you shouldn't complain anymore. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be accepted if you do. <laughs> no chance. And of course, I want to take this opportunity to really thank you for your donations. Uh, you really make a difference. And, you know, we don't get rich. We don't, you know, we, it's not that much. But it does help us to buy, for example, audio gear or, you know, some other little things that make the podcast better. So keep on donating. You might want to look at the subscription model. $3, I think, per month. Of course, the dollar is not uh, <laughs> worth uh, very much anymore these days. But uh, anyway, so uh, donating and subscribing to the monthly donations really great thing. We actually don't have many uh, subscribers. It's maybe 20. That's not a big number. So you might reconsider. And uh, so why don't you subscribe? I mean, $3 a month isn't, isn't a lot of money. It's, it's actually a beer, or, you know. Um, okay, 
uh, different topic. <laughs> so uh, back in the beginning of 2006, uh, when I was trying to find good podcasts on software engineering and didn't find any and therefore uh, had to uh, do my own one, that's uh, when everything started. And of course, uh, while it was my idea, I, I, you know, I couldn't have done it alone. It's too much work. So I want to talk a little bit about the team. Um, and uh, each of our team members has uh, built a little, you know, one to two minute MP3. And uh, each of us will introduce ourselves to you so you know a little bit better uh, what we're all up to. And I included, you know, the, the backend people. You remember a couple of, well, months ago, I had this cry for help where um, I was uh, asking people to help us, uh, you know, put things online, do the sound editing and stuff. And actually, we got people who, who did uh, volunteer to actually help us. And I want uh, to introduce those people to you, too. Of course, in the meantime, a couple of people have left us. Uh, Eberhard Wolf, uh, currently working for Interface. No, well, it's called Spring Source. And uh, Alexander Schmidt uh, both have left for reasons of uh, time. They didn't find the time anymore. And also, we are on the verge of uh, getting two new people on. And I promise once they're on and once they, you know, did some work, <laughs> produced some episodes, um, uh, they will also uh, produce this one to two minute MP3 and we'll put it into a regular episode. But we want to make sure that you actually know uh, who is behind this. I will now insert or play uh, the MP3s of all our team members, and I'll start with the backend crew. My name is Bernd Kolb. I just started to work for SAP in Waldorf. Before, I used to be an independent consultant and trainer focused on model-driven software development and Eclipse technologies as well as OSGI. I'm a committer in the Open Architecture Code Generation framework, which just recently moved over to Eclipse, to the Eclipse modeling project. Together with three colleagues of mine, I've written a German book on OSGI, which was published by D-Punkt in May 2008. Additionally, I'm a regular speaker at various conferences. From these conferences, I also know most of the other SE Radio team members. I'm with SE Radio since its very first episodes and mainly working in the background on the website to keep it up and running. In my spare time, I'm an enthusiastic glider pilot flying in the southern parts of Germany. Additionally, I'm playing a bit of table tennis. If you want to reach me, just write me an email to b.kolb at se-radio.net. My name is Volker Mostov and I'm responsible for publishing the podcasts. So if a podcast is late or the show notes contain errors, it is probably my fault. Not so long ago, I finished my degree in bioinformatics at the University of Tübingen. After that, I wrote mapping applications for mobile phones. Currently, I live in Berlin, where I'm working on applications for the retail sector in the R&D department at Torex. Hello listeners, my name is Christian Bobovic and I'm a sound editor and show assembler for SU Radio. I live in Romania, in a city called Timisoara, and as a day-to-day -day job, I work as a software developer for a German company called Auto Software. My main interest is enterprise development, mostly I'm working with Java-related technologies, but I also am interested in studying aspect orientation programming and messaging systems. At SE Radio, my task is to make the sound a little better. So basically, I'm receiving the tracks from the interviewers. I clean up the sound, make some audio processing, mix the tracks together, and then export the MP3 and upload it to Libsyn. So if you have any suggestions regarding the sound quality or any other complaints, just send me an email and uh, this would be very helpful. So thank you very much for listening and uh, take care. Ciao. So uh, those were the backend people. And uh, now let's look at the editorial and interview team. Hi, I'm Arno. That is Arno Hase. I'm one of the editors of Software Engineering Radio and I've been with the show right from the start. I am an independent software architect based in Braunschweig in Germany and I've been working in professional software development since 1990. People tend to pay me for things that involve software architecture. Sometimes I develop an architecture and accompany a project to help it evolve and help it get implemented in a good way. Sometimes I come in for shorter term consultancies, reviews or coaching or something. And my personal favorite right now is doing fixed price contracts. I put together a team and build an entire system that gives me the opportunity to cut out lots of the red tape and allows me to do things in a way that I know work well. My focus is on technology rather than team or management issues. I mean, 
I know that if you do software architecture, you need to deal with person's issues and team issues to a certain degree. It's just that I enjoy the technology side a lot more. One thing I really enjoy is reading huge quantities of source code. And many people have called me weird because of that, but I love it. If you like, give me a couple of hundred thousand lines of code without any design documentation, lock me in a room for a couple of days, and then I come out and present the overall design architecture. I love it to read source code and extract things from the source code. And well, when I'm not actually doing any software work, I love reading. Basically, I read anything. I read a lot of nonfiction, but I also read thrillers, science fiction, whodunit, that kind of stuff. Other things, I like going outdoors. I like going hiking. Uh, I like going canoeing and I also enjoy nature photography. I tend to take photos of animals, especially anything that's small like spiders, flies, well, anything that's small and interesting. And that's it about me for now. Hello, my name is Michael Kircher. I'm working for a big German company in the healthcare domain. In my current position, I'm head of a software development department developing platform components for medical devices. Before that, I have been working in the same company as in a consulting and research department where I started off as a middleware expert on ACE and DAO. Uh, you remember Doug Schmidt. And uh, then became uh, an expert in software architecture, was actually leading several small and large uh, software development efforts and finally became lead of some critical and crisis projects. During that time, uh, my favorite topics have been uh, HL development, distributed object computing and product line engineering. And in my today's job, I can actually pretty good combine all those topics uh, again, but of course, from a different perspective. Uh, as you realize, the mentioned uh, topics are also my favorite topics to talk about here at SE Radio. I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Martin Lippert and I'm a consultant and coach uh, working for IT Agile. It's a small consulting company in Germany. And there I work mostly in the area of Agile software development methods. So I'm helping teams to adopt Agile methods to improve their agility uh, helping companies to uh, adopt agile methods. And on the other side, um, I'm quite interested in technologies like OSGI, uh, Eclipse technologies in general, and other ideas how to develop large scale object oriented software systems and keeping their architecture healthy over time. For SE Radio, I act as an interviewer for mostly these areas like OSGI, testing, refactoring, agile software development methods, and some some low-level techniques like performance engineering. In my spare time, I am working on uh, the Equinox OSGI implementation and trying to improve that and combining it with aspect-oriented techniques and aspect-oriented programming. So I'm working as a, as a committer on the Equinox Incubator project. And I'm quite happy to, to integrate aspect weaving into it. And I also like to write articles and uh, give talks and conferences. So if you meet me at a conference, uh, feel free to say hello. And uh, I'm happy to talk to you. Okay, that's it. My name is Lawrence Tratt. I'm one of the interviewers here at Software Engineering Radio. In the day job, I'm a senior lecturer at Bournemouth University in England and a software consultant. My general interests uh, relate to making better software. If I had to be a bit more specific, I'd say that uh, one aspect of this is software modeling. So you'll see episodes on UML and that sort of thing. Uh, but perhaps more specifically, uh, programming languages. I've always been very interested in programming languages since they're what make uh, software possible. Um, I'm from the design of languages, different paradigms, the implementation of compilers and the surrounding things, uh, passing and so on. I've designed and implemented my own language called Converge. And I hope that we'll be seeing a lot more of this sort of thing on Software Engineering Radio in the future. I hope you enjoy it. Goodbye. So this was the team. Once again, thank you to all of you guys. Thanks to the team. I really couldn't have done it alone. And um, before we leave this section, I want to introduce myself. So, uh, well, my name is Markus Felder. You probably know that. 
and uh, I'm working as an independent consultant. That means I mostly travel around uh, to different projects and help those people, you know, use certain technologies and approaches. I mainly focus on software architecture, model-driven development, product lines, domain-specific languages. And I help project teams learn and adopt these things, help them set up their own, I don't know, generators, help them defining the architecture, documenting the architecture. Also, recently, I've done a lot of research work. I've been involved in several research projects, EU projects and stuff, where I was able to work a little bit on some of more conceptual stuff. Some of the model-driven product line engineering stuff has uh, come out of this. As a consequence of that work, I also always try to you know, keep one of my feet uh, in the research world. I'm also involved in workshops and conferences and stuff. As you might know, I'm also involved in uh, Eclipse modeling and open architecture where I've uh, uh, helped make this one of the primary uh, tools for model-driven development. I've, uh, I'm a committer, I'm a developer, although today I don't do too much work on it. But I do a lot of uh, training, consulting and also public relations all around it. Which brings me to the other thing I really like doing, which is uh, speaking at conferences. I typically speak at seven or eight conferences per year, giving tutorials and talks on my on my topics here. And I really like doing this. I've also written a couple of books. Um, although in retrospect, I have to say, writing books is really a lot of work and you don't really reach so many people. We reach way more people through the podcast. Um, but of course, uh, writing a book is still something that's considered by mainstream at least as uh, you know something that's very good for, for your uh, resume. <laughs> Finally, um, as you might know, I'm actually a passionate glider pilot. I try to spend as much of my time in the air as opposed to on the ground. I have my own glider and I uh, try to use it as much as possible during the summertime. Also, I have to say I really, really like this audio work, this podcasting stuff, you know, uh, doing uh, audio processing, coming up with audio content, doing all this. I really like doing it. So that's uh, probably all about me. Um, thank you again for listening and for helping me make, quote, my podcast a real success. Um, obviously, it would not have worked without the audience. Let me talk a little bit about our partners. I don't want to call them sponsors because uh, typically there is no money changing hands, but rather uh, they help us achieve certain goals. Let's start with... Uh, the Deutsche Gesellschaft for Informatik, that's the German chapter of the ACM. They uh, have put our podcast onto their website and uh, do, did some advertising in their uh, newsletters. Same is true for uh, www.softwarecompetence.de, uh, another website where we did some banner exchange. InfoQ helped us a while ago to publish uh, SE Radio a little bit. We uh, put some uh, links to uh, SOA content and I think to Ruby content also onto InfoQ and we got quite some traffic from there. IEEE Software has put SE Radio onto their website. Um, that's another good thing because I, I at least I respect the uh, IEEE folks quite well and so if they put uh, a link to SE Radio onto their website that, uh, that, that, that tells us something about what they think about SE Radio which in turn makes me happy. We've also collaborated extensively with uh, Upsla, as you know, uh, the SE Radio team, together with uh, Dim Sum Thinking, Daniel Steinberg. Uh, we were together producing the Upsla podcast. We did that last year. We're doing it this year again. And we are putting some of the interviews in a shortened form on uh, the Upsla podcast and the extended version on SE Radio. Another banner sharing, uh, the uh, German uh, magazine Objektspektrum has put uh, links to SE Radio onto their website and also mentioned uh, us in the magazine. Thanks for that. Also, there is something I want to announce here. We will be doing our first uh, live shows uh, at uh, the upcoming OOP conference in uh, Munich in January of 2009. We'll have four sessions um, on stage, interviews instead of normal uh, presentations with audience questions and we'll record it for SE Radio. I'm really looking forward to that. So um, you might want to uh, consider coming to OOP and asking some good questions. I'll announce uh, the guests uh, in the show later once we really confirm all of that. Then uh, we've worked together with uh, D. -punkt. You might remember they have helped us organize our get-together, which unfortunately we had to cancel because uh, not uh, enough people uh, considered coming. Uh, they also put uh, advertising for SE Radio in the, into the back of some of their books. So that also helped making SE Radio well-known. Finally, um, 
we have uh, received support from two companies. One is Siox Embedded Systems, a company from the Netherlands and Eindhoven. And finally, uh, Itemis is helping us doing the transcripts, and I'll talk about that in a minute. They are paying for the actual transcriptions, and uh, that's really something we couldn't have done without their support. So thanks for that. So if you know a company or you know an institution, a website or anything that wants to partner with SE Radio, why don't you contact us, let us know how we can cooperate. As I said, usually no money should change hands. That just makes everything more complicated. And um, so helping us uh, achieve a certain goal is uh, much more useful. So if you know something, know somebody, please uh, make them contact me at team at se-radio.net. One thing I've always seen as a problem with uh, SE Radio is uh, the fact that it has never been a real organization. It was just a bunch of people. And that, you know, created all kinds of problems whenever somebody wanted to give us money, you know, how do we do this? So we usually didn't take any. Um, and, 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 you know, I mean, if you're not an organization anyways, some things are hard. So we've contemplated, you know, creating our own association, but that has all this overhead we need to, you know, take care of. If it would be a German Verein, we'd have to have all those official, you know, posts and people and roles and, and stuff. So anyway, we found a really good uh, solution for that. And that is SE Radio is now officially part of Hillside Europe. You probably haven't heard about Hillside Europe. It's it's a it's a it's an official association, uh, German Verein uh, e.V. Um, um, whose mission is basically the betterment of software development, the improvement of the quality of software development, and uh, the venue you probably know something that Hillside actually runs. Hillside Europe actually runs is the um, Europlop conference. So the European Patterns Conference is something that is run by the Hillside Europe Association. And now, uh, after the official decision during uh, Europlop this year, the second endeavor um, Hillside is running is SE Radio. Um, basically, nothing will change, but we are now part of an official organization which uh, gives us some legal standing. Hillside Europe is obviously... Uh, a part of Hillside. Well, it's not formally a part of, but it's strongly associated with the U.S. Hillside, which is the original group of people who um, who, who founded the PLOP conferences worldwide. Folks like uh, Ralph Johnson are, are involved there. So I really want to thank uh, the Hillside Europe guys for making this possible. As part of the deal, what we decided to do is to do once or twice a year, do a special show on patterns and maybe on the Hillside Europe activities in this respect, specifically the Europe Lab Conference. Um, I don't think this is a you know any problem for SE Radio because, as we said, the goals are really somewhat similar. I mean, we also SE Radio also wants to improve software quality and educate people, so that's a really good uh, alignment of goals with Hillside. So having one or two special episodes on pattern-related material as part of SE Radio. Actually, I think it's a benefit. It's not a problem. So um, that's what you call a win-win situation. And I thank the guys at Hillside uh, to for making this possible. Um, and uh, also Jens Koldebey, who actually had the idea. And, and, and although I know all the folks at Hillside Europe because I'm a regular, well, I haven't been this year and last year, but I'm basically a regular uh, Europlop uh, participant. So he actually had the idea and, and, and he, we talked it through and, and, and then we approached the officials at Hillside Europe and uh, everything worked out fine. So thanks Hillside Europe. I'm looking forward to a long and uh, prosperous cooperation. So the last thing I want to talk about in uh, this About episode briefly is our transcript dilemma. So here's the story. As I said before, Itemis uh, has volunteered to pay for transcripts. So uh, the transcripts are now created by a company called Tech Synergy, and um, we have about 80 transcripts already. They are basically on my hard disk. The reason why they are not published yet is because they're, they need to be QA'd. There are a couple of uh, mistakes in it, you know, things that have been transcribed wrongly, and that needs to be fixed. Um, so we've been asking for volunteer help, and our team member Damun actually... Uh, took this on and uh, started um, QAing them, but it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work. So um, we tried to find find additional um, QAers 
and uh, Damun uh, started coordinating them. So he did the coordination work and the other guys did the actual QA. But, uh, you know, it's not really moving. Um, those other guys, you know, two dropped off after they noticed how much work it is and the others just don't, you know, they're just just not fast enough. So it's a bit annoying because we got, we, we have the transcripts, uh, Tim is, is paying for them and we can't put them online. So here is what the plan is. I will give you another week uh, after you hear this podcast. Um, if there is, I don't know, 50 volunteers and uh, typically there are fewer, so please you, as you hear it, please volunteer. Um, please volunteer to do one or two transcripts, and then we, you know, that's all we need. If, if we find 100 people who do one transcript each, we're done. So it's basically about reading it, and if, you know, if you read something like Seaside, you know, the, the, the web framework, the Smalltalk web from framework spelled C, the letter C hyphen S-I-D-E, then what you do is you you fix it to seaside, S-E-A side and stuff, you know. You shouldn't, you don't correct grammar and make the language better. It's really just about fixing blatant mistakes. Some of them are even marked up by the transcribers because they didn't know how to transcribe things. Anyway, so if within a week we find those 50 or even more people who help us, we'll do the QA with those guys and put things online. Otherwise, we will put the un 8 stuff online, so that's basically the raw transcripts as they come, and we put a thick, fat, red marker on the page that says, you know, this text hasn't yet been quality assured, there might be mistakes in it. If you spot something, please let us know, or better even, volunteer to QA this page. So that's the plan we have. Uh, I hope that's okay. And uh, well, you know, I mean, we don't ask for much for SE Radio, you know, just why don't you volunteer and help us? That would be really very useful. Okay, um, so um, that's it for the About episode. Um, the last thing I want to do today is I want to play a song, uh, the song we use for the intro, so you can uh, hear it once completely. The song is called Vegas Hard Rock Shuffle. It's by Charlie Crow. It's from the Podsafe Music Network, where you can find all kinds of good music uh, that is uh, free to use in podcasts. Just need to notify the uh, composer or the artist, which we did. Um, thanks for that. Thanks for listening, everybody. And, uh, well, uh, hope to get some volunteers helping with the transcript stuff. <laughs> Send an email to team at se-radio.net. Thanks. Bye.
Thanks for downloading and listening to Software Engineering Radio. Software Engineering Radio is an educational program brought to you by Hillside Europe. If you want more information about the podcast and all the other episodes, visit our website at se-radio.net. If you want to support us, you can donate to the SE Radio team via the website. Or you can advertise for SE Radio, for example, by clicking on the Dick Reddit Delicious and Slashdot buttons. To contact the team, please send email to team at se-radio.net or if it is specific to an episode, please use the comments facility on the website so other people can react to your comments. This episode of SE Radio as well as all other episodes are licensed under a Creative Commons 2.5 license. Please see the website for details. Thanks to Charlie Crow and the Podsafe Music Network for the music used in the show. The song is called Vegas Power Company.